Wrestling fans from around the corner and around the world, I'm Dan Moratti. And fans, you've asked for it. We're here to give it to you. President Cena being the man of the people. Coming soon to BostonWrestling.com. If you're outside of our television footprint, it's going to be the June MWF Superstar Zone television program where we go back to the 45th annual Cauliflower Alley Club reunion in Las Vegas, Nevada. This month, we're going to take a look at Stone Cold Steve Austin presenting the Art Abrams Lifetime Achievement Award to fellow WWE Hall of Famer, the one, the only, good old J.I. Jim Ross, the man that all professional wrestling fans miss each and every week on WWE television programming. This episode is actually going to be commercial free, brought to you by John Layfield's Nutrition market.com website where you can get over 4,500 supplements at 70% off after the shenanigans that have gone on between JBL and President Cena. I don't know if Mr. Cena is so hot on that idea, but right now let's take a preview of Stone Cold and Jim Ross from Las Vegas. Professional wrestling. This is not sports entertainment. It's professional wrestling. Yeah. yeah. You're always going to have one main thing of mine over and over and over again, and it's always going to be Jim Ross, in my opinion, the, the greatest of all time. Yeah. And uh, truly uh, a credit to the business and a person who loves the business every day he wakes up. And he still has more to give. The greatest master of all time. Receiving the Hart Abrams Lifetime Achievement Award. Mr. Jim Ross. Situation really was good. It was over. 
uh, it was really good, and they, 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 they brought me into the business as a white-eyed kid that I had to be a part of somehow. Uh, but in Oklahoma, where I grew up and where we still live, uh, you know, we were known for Danny Hodge and uh, Cowboy Bill Watts and, of course, uh, late great Jack Briscoe. And uh, earlier this year, I had the privilege of uh, giving Jack's eulogy in Tampa. And, I, and then the, the man I'm going to talk about now is the one that was a forerunner to all of them, named Leroy McGurk. I don't think very many people here probably, there's only a few that remember Leroy. Leroy lost his sight in 1951 as a junior, and he was a junior heavyweight champion. So at the peak of his career, he became blind. Uh, and Leroy and I worked together. Leroy was my first broadcast partner. And, uh, and I had to learn to be descriptive. You know, I've always thought what brought me to the dance was my passion for the product and my love of the game. I wasn't a great athlete that so many here are. I met Don Leo Jonathan yesterday, and I can tell you I was in awe. Well, I wasn't in much awe. I was really in awe. Uh, because I heard so much about Don Leo Jonathan over the years. Uh, and I got a chance to meet, meet him yesterday. When I'm in the same room with Danny Hodge, it's like if we were at a baseball convention, I was in the same room with Mickey Mantle. He's my guy, my hero. And we traveled together. And I drove mile after mile after mile. I said, Danny, it's your turn to drive. Okay, Tiger, okay, Jim. <laughs> so you get behind the wheel, and I doze off, and about 10 minutes later, I hear gravel all over the car. And I'd say, all right, he'd be slapping himself. Then I'd go back to sleep, and he'd do the same thing. I'd wake up so angry. I'd say, hell, what's up, me drive? God, you're killing me. You're just killing me. And I told somebody, I'd get up to the town, and say, hey, uh, hey, kid. I was a kid then. Hey, kid. Oh, you look tired. You ain't sleeping? I said, no, I'm going to go Hodge, 300 miles, but Monroe and Tulsa, God, I'm going to drive. You can't stay awake. He says, is he playing that gravel trick on you? <laughs> what gravel trick? Learn a gravel trick. Tricky. Uh, one time, Leroy was a really interesting man, very complex, educated, went to Oklahoma A&M, national champion of Oklahoma A&M, uh, but could be very volatile upon his imbibing on whiskey. And because I was Bill Watts' lackey, making $125 a week, I did uh, lackey jobs, like I drove Leroy. I was Leroy's driver. Because he was blind, he wanted to go for him to drive. I got pissed off at him one time and asked if he wanted to drive, and that didn't go so well. He was, he was complaining about my driving. You're blind. How fast do you know I'm going or not going? You can't see. All right, so on Tuesdays, we drove from Tulsa to Shreveport, 300 miles. And I'm behind, I'm the first time I ever drove a Cadillac. He was also the first blind man I ever knew. Which reminds me of the first time I took a shower with an African American man, which reminded me of why I didn't have any business in there either. <laughs> so that's probably another story from the rock. Leroy and I are going to Shreveport. Leroy and I are going to Shreveport. And I get on the road, and he's got this whiskey in one hand, cigar in the other, and he's bound some boat. And he, he, pull, he looks in the glove, glove box, and he takes out a 38, like that most powerful handgun in the world, man. And he puts it in his lap, so he's got his, he's got his gun in his lap, whiskey in one hand, and a cigar in the other. And I'm thinking, man, I ain't very smart. Oh, okay, this ain't gonna, this is not gonna flush. And I said, Leroy, what do we need that gun for? We, you know, buddies. We, what would that gun for, Leroy? Well, we are going to Shreveport, and I'm going to kill that Ted DiBiase. I'm going to murder that bastard, and you're going to help me set it up. Now, I'm going to do second here. I just, you know, 125 a week, I'd like to have a few more, you know, a couple more shekels for the, uh, good accessory to murder, you should make more than 125 a week. I didn't think it was a good time to negotiate my contract, so I just said, Leroy, contract, like we had a contract back in those days. Well, you know, young Ted was a amorous young lad. Rumor had it he might have been squiring young Miss McGurk. 
No, he wasn't like she was 12. Come on. She was like 18. But he was a young guy, too. He was 20-something. Maybe 30. No, I'm kidding. 